Well, there's my solar panel, also as a sunshade, <laughs> which I can lock up. There we go, charging it up. Hello, YouTubers. I bought a second marine battery. It's a Group 27 marine battery. And um, right now I'm charging it with a re regular battery charger right here. While in my truck, I'm charging it with a solar panel. It's fine. Uh, these solutions, I think, could stand well for me for a long time. For short trips, you could take the marine battery out, charge it with AC to DC charger. It'll last for a few days. But with a solar panel, as long as there's sun, you can continue charging it. I was looking for a solution that would charge it from my regular battery, my starting battery in my truck. I looked at the different sort of dual battery charger kits where you connect one battery to the other. And it looked like I needed a battery isolator so that if the starting battery falls below a certain voltage, it'll cut off to protect the starting battery so that you'll still be able to start your truck. Once it goes up to a certain level, it'll charge up your auxiliary battery. And of all the solutions I looked at, there was one that was a little bit more on the expensive side. I think it's like about $115 on Amazon. It didn't require the use of fuses. It required, I think, two connections and that's it from your starting battery to the dual battery kit, the isolator, and then two wires out to the auxiliary battery. For someone like me, I need something that's stupid simple. I'm not a car guy, I'm not an electrical guy. I was pretty sure if I got the simplest solution and the diagrams were clear, I have enough mechanical ability to connect them together and do the testing and have a solution that charges my auxiliary battery from my starting battery. And then when I'm boondocked with the car off, I can continue charging with a solar panel. So for me, that's the best of both worlds. So what I got was a Keyline dual battery charger. It has an um, Isolator Pro dual battery kit. It has um, the alternator outputs up to 120 amps. It's fully automated, automatic, suitable for marine, four-wheel drive, caravan, and solar. And then priority charging for the starting battery. It has everything that's uh, included in that picture. Let's take a closer look. Okay, there's the box. Let's open her up. All right. This guy, specific to the isolator, it looks like. Here's a diagram of how you hook everything up. Another manual. It shows you the components. Shows you the tools required. And then a very easy to follow diagram. And as you can see, they have the two batteries, your starting battery that's within your truck in my instance, and then the house battery, which is gonna go behind my seat. And if you look at the main connections, it looks like there's one wire that goes to the isolator from the starting battery, and then another wire that goes to the negative of the house battery. And then from there, the house battery to the isolator. And according to them, you are done. So I'll go through step by step by, of how I do it. Here are the contents. Got your positive wires. Got your ground and negative wires. Looks like you got some twist ties, some um, cable ends to connect to your batteries. Battery terminators, I think is the term. And some more battery terminators that are color-coded. Red for positive, black for negative or ground. 
Oh, they have three of these guys. And then the isolator. It's a little stubborn coming out. Let's see. And there it is. 12 volts, 140 amps. Isopro. In the parts list, it was interesting because they said that there's a, um, a blue terminator. And I was going, there's no, nothing blue. But then um, I saw this little piece where you can put your fingernail and pull it out. And then there's the rest of the things you need. Even the screws to screw in the isolator. Uh, really nice that they thought of that. And forces you to open it up. So do all the connections. All right, let's just go ahead and do this, shall we? Okay, step-by-step -step instructions. I've already laid out the dual battery kit. So step one is done. Step two, isolate the starting battery by removing the negative terminal. Okay, the battery's, battery terminal is loosened and off so isolates that number three select a location for the smart battery isolator that's easily accessible and will not have the cables running near exhaust and is as close as possible to the starting battery Alrighty, let me figure that out well i'm thinking right here it's right next to my battery and this is just the uh, right below this is the tire so this is just metal. I'm thinking right there. Perhaps this way so I can actually read what's on there. There's a little LED. So I'll probably do it like that. Okay, step four. Remove the lower mounting plate from the SBI to use as a template and mark the position of the four holes to be drilled. Drill the holes using a 3.5 millimeter drill bit. Okay, so I would be removing this bottom plate and using this as a template. Okay, I've marked four places to put it and time to drill. Okay, the holes are drilled. Step five, secure the two blind holes of the base with the short four millimeter screws. Huh. Okay, so I have okay two short ones. Let's do that. Okay, this took me a little bit to figure out. When you look at the isolator, there's two holes, which would take long screws, and then two blanks on the other corners. And so what they mean is to connect this base with these short screws first. And so you, you have to figure out how you want it positioned, and then do it on this axis for the short base. So this corner and this corner, and then the other two holes will remain open for when you secure the entire isolator. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, the base plate is secured. Step six, take the six meter length of red cable, which has been terminated at both ends. Begin from the center of the mounting plate and run the cable along the inner guard and firewall to the positive terminal of the starting battery. Careful to keep the wiring away from any moving parts. Cut the cable to length. See wiring diagram below for standard installation. So for the Americans out there, it's about three feet per meter, so about 18 feet. So the long one, the long red cable. Looks like there's just one long big cable, so there's no confusion about which cable to grab. So the whole firewall business, I think, is to go through into the cab. I think I see a plug that I can open up and it'll go kind of near the uh, glove compartment. I never knew what those things were for, but the edge pries up nicely. It must be for these sorts of thing, running wires into the cab. So I just ran the wire through that, that hole that's plugged up just to see where it went. And it came out right below my glove compartment box, so that's perfect. I'm just going to drill a hole in the cap so that it remains uh, watertight. Okay, as you see, I drilled a hole in the uh, cover, the rubber cap. 
and um, now I'm going to run the wire through it then it will go into the cabin right below the glove compartment. Well if you're clever this side panel comes off you can run the wire underneath where the door panel lies there's this little strip at least in my Toyota and you take up these screws a bit and then you can lift up the edge and you can tuck this underneath it okay so the wire goes through the firewall I'm running it next to the door seal and it comes out here and it will connect to my auxiliary battery at the positive terminal so I'm gonna have to cut it here but for now I'm not going to do that I'm just going to use a full length and I know there's going to be a voltage drop but that's all right for right now and for testing I'm going to do it this way so in I believe it's step six you run it from the positive term, terminal of the starting battery to the center of the mounting plate and so I will cut it right about here and then attach the terminal end okay step eight strip the unterminated ends of both cables back 15 millimeters which I have done so fit the copper lugs crimp in place make sure it's secure and then slide the heat shrink over the lug and cable then heat with a flame or hair driver hair dryer until secure so let's do that okay here are the lugs and the heat wrap Okay, got the heat shrink wrap on and I don't have one of those um, heat guns those fancy heat guns or a butane torch but I do have a butane lighter so we'll see how that works and that worked great you can just use a butane lighter apparently Okay, step 11. Attach both red cables to the SBI. This is the SBI and tighten the retaining nuts. And so the starter battery connects onto this, the one with the red dot, and then the auxiliary battery red wire goes to this one. And there's notches here that you cut out basically so that the wire can fit through. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so the positive wires are connected and the starter battery will go on this one or the short end and then um, at least for me it's the short end but the one to the starter battery has a red dot again and if you ever forget it's also listed in print for the first battery and the secondary battery okay we're on to step 13 and um, we're going to fix the SBI unit to the plate that I have already attached this is the other negative um, ground wire that's on the SBI and apparently I'm supposed to put this at the terminal end and then attach it to the ground so I'm going to fix that okay now on the auxiliary battery we put the positive terminal and attach it and also attach the ground so I connected the ground post to the bolt holding the seat and then the positive has also been connected so I think that's step 12. Okay, so we got everything up to, I think, step 15. On the auxiliary battery, I connected the black ground cable. And then I selected a nearby body bolt and secured it. And now attach the red lead from the SBI to the positive terminal of the auxiliary battery and then secure the, the cable. I've done that. 18, before fitting the battery terminal to the positive side of the start battery, check the type of existing battery terminal. If it has a stud nut, secure the existing wire. Okay, so that's what I got. Okay, so I turned on the lights and the interior lights and you can see the light went off. So the voltage went below the charging limit of the starting battery. So lights on. I'm going to call it good. I don't have a voltmeter at the moment, but I'll take the test later. So that was my dual battery install video. I hope you find it useful. Now I just need to attach an inverter, which is pretty simple. You just 
attach the wires and see if the blue light turns on <laughs> and then test it but um, <clears throat> the last step we're just testing I don't have a voltmeter at the moment but the indicator lights went on so it turned on red when the starter battery was at the right voltage so the auxiliary battery was getting charged and then when I turned off turned on the lights and shut off the engine the voltage went down and the light turned off so later I'll check with the voltmeter but for now I'm gonna call it done I'll do a follow-up video when I install the inverter alright see you next time <laughs>